This video is on purifying copper using electrolysis. So the key thing to remember is that you'll need a beaker, excuse my horrible diagrams, containing a solution of copper sulfate. Remember it's important that it's a solution so that the ions are free to move. There's the formula of copper sulfate. Then you need your electrodes. So your positive electrode is your anode. And your negative electrode is your cathode. In terms of what these electrodes are made from, the anode is made from impure copper. The cathode is made from pure copper. Because it's electrolysis, it involves electricity, you need a complete circuit, so you need a power supply. I'm just gonna draw a simple cell there to represent it. And then your copper sulfate solution has your electrodes dipped into it. Now to actually understand the chemistry of what's taking place. You need to start by saying what happens at the anode. So remember, that's the positive electrode. We're gonna say that copper is oxidized. Use the mnemonic oil rig to help you remember what that means. Oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is gain. So if I've written that copper is oxidized, it means that that copper must have lost electrons. And I'll show you a half equation representing that. So here's our copper, it's lost electrons. Because those electrons are negatively charged, it will have a net positive charge of two plus. You might also have seen that equation written like this. But that is representing oxidation. What's happening at the cathode, so the negative electrode, those copper ions are attracted and are reduced. According to oil rig, Reduction is gain of electrons. And to show you that half equation, there is reduction taking place. So you will see at that cathode over here, pure copper forming. So you'll see a nice orange pink color form. We often use things like propanone in order to purify it. Sometimes they ask you to look at changes in mass. So you'll expect the anode here to lose mass because that's where oxidation is taking place. You'll expect the cathode here to gain in mass because of the formation of copper. When copper sulfate solution is electrolyzed using copper electrodes, the mass of each electrode changes. Draw a label diagram to show the apparatus that can be used to electrolyze copper sulfate solution using copper electrodes. So we need our beaker. We need two electrodes the anode and the cathode. There's the anode, there's the cathode. There's our copper sulfate solution. Here's our electrodes. And then remember, electrolysis involves the use of electricity, so we need a power supply, so I'm gonna provide a cell with connecting wires. Before the electrolysis is carried out, the mass of each electrode is determined. Explain what should be done to the copper electrodes before their masses are determined. Well, you need to remove any oxide -like layer present using wire wool. Figure four shows the results obtained from an electrolysis experiment when copper sulfate solution was electrolyzed for 10 minutes. Explain in terms of ions the changes in mass of the two electrodes shown in the results in figure four. So before electrolysis, the anode had a mass of 6.43, and then afterwards it was 5.62, indicating a loss of minus 0 0.81. So why has a loss of mass occurred at the anode? Well, here we know that oxidation of copper atoms occurred. So the copper atoms turned into copper ions due to the loss of electrons. So it's that loss of copper ions which causes that change in mass. And then at the cathode, those copper ions are attracted they gain electrons, they're reduced. 
so therefore the mass increases due to the gain of copper atoms.